Change around a little bit? Yeah, man, you know. What, uh, what, what happened? I didn't, I didn't hear what happened. Was it injury or what, what happened? Uh, my last cut got real bad and I got hospitalized, so they had to, uh, you know, pull the fight. It's neat. I forgot about that. I do remember that. Yeah, apologize. So talk to me about the health. Uh, I mean, any lasting implications? I mean, that's a, a difficult process to go through. Um, there were at, at the beginning, but um, dealing with um, Ruckerts and uh, getting the right doctors around me, they cleared everything up, so I'm 100%. They just, like, no need to put this strain on your body. You've been doing it for too long. You've been doing it wrong. For a lot of that time, you know, in the beginning, fighters don't really know what they're doing, so it's cause and effect. So had to figure it out the hard way. So they said, Dude, don't put no strain on your body, and I feel good. Nice. So what's, I mean, I guess, do you have to change diet or anything, or is it now, is it just? I get to eat. Get to eat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, so is this kind of what you walked around at before? Or? Um, yeah, I walked around a little bit bigger, but uh, it's more of me focusing on fighting now, not focusing on weight cutting. So <laughs> that's, that's really a, like a mental relief. I guess this part of you think like, geez, I wish. I mean, I guess we'll see. How, I, does it? You gotta wait till Saturday to see how you feel, right? But I mean, right now, as you're exactly. sitting there, you're like, why didn't I do this a long time ago? Yeah, like now I'm present. Like sometimes when you cut weight, you get like the out of body feeling. You're just moving through the motions because you got a lot of obligations, a lot of water obligations, water loading and stuff. But uh, not having those severe obligations and being able to really just sit here and enjoy the fight week, it's a it's a blessing right now. I'm I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited. That's awesome. Where does it start? Because obviously weight cutting is such a big thing in the sport, right? Like, where does it start with, is it like a psychological thing? Like, these guys are just too big. I need to cut down. Or do, like, people around you say, yeah, it's bro, more, you it's more people around you. Like, as far as we don't care. Like, we like to we fight anybody anywhere, anytime. That's the way we are. We're built this way. That's how we got here. But it's more of uh, the people around you. Like, hey, you're kind of not that big. Da -da -da. You'll do better if you cut weight. And they'll be like, oh, sure. Da -da -da. Why not? You get into it and you get into the game and it becomes habit. Like, okay, I'm going to just keep cutting the weight. I could have built muscle, like it could have went any direction, but uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. Very nice. So, how are you going into Saturday night? Are you thinking like, well, we gotta we gotta see how we feel, or is it like, no, this is no, this, this is the way we yeah, do it's it? A, it's a it's a go. Like you said, I feel normal. I'm a fighter. It's, I'm here to fight, and now I have to worry about the strain of cutting weight. My mental my mental health is good. Like my body's good. I'm not straining. Like I'm I'm present and I'm ready. That's awesome. So the last couple of years have been tough, right? Like cancels, rescheduled, all that stuff. I mean, how tough of a process has it been to kind of stay focused? Yeah, it, it's been a tough one. I've been fighting since the epidemic. I was one of the first people, like one of the first groups of fighters who just kept kept fighting. So after Brooklyn card got canceled, everything was up in the air. So they just did what they could do. It was like, hey, keep training. And that's what I did. And that being stuck in the house, everybody not be able to do anything. You're just training. That's mentally wear and tear. And then the body, you're not getting everything you need because you can't go to certain stores. Everything's closing down. So all that over the two years, and then the hiccups with the weight, and then uh, the body failing a little bit. It's been it's been a crazy two years. It's been pretty crazy. But uh, we're here now. We're healthy. We're hungry, and we're ready to make a statement. Was it tough to stay positive during all that stuff? I mean, were there any points along the way where like, why why am I doing this? Oh, for sure. Like, I'd be lying if I said like, nah, it was always all positive. Nah, you always get down in the dumps. That's part of life. Like, you gotta. You gotta learn to suck that up and find your method of getting out of the out of the dark. That's one thing I had to learn. Like, how do I get out of the dark? Like, you get to listen to other people say stuff, uh, but it doesn't really relate to you because everybody has their own perspective on everything. So, me getting there, being able to sit down, because of the health injury. So that was also a good thing. Like, okay, I'd actually need to relax. So me being able to sit down and really think about it, or having the downtime to think about it, and understand myself, helps tremendously. That's awesome. You just seem incredibly relaxed and happy right now. Is this like the most relaxed and happy you've ever been on a fight week? Yeah, actually, I'm violent as hell right now. I'm just not showing y'all. But <laughs> it's, it's, keep it, it's just keep it. Keep, I'm, I'm extremely violent in my mind. I think about punching everything. But <laughs> but uh, try to keep it under wraps. You know, wait till Saturday. Well, you're doing a good job, man. <laughs> All right, talk, talk about the matchup with Khalil. What, what do you think about when that was the name that came across? Was it uh, one you were excited about? Uh, I was excited. I'm a, I'm a fan of Khalil. Like I said, he's been fighting for a while. He's been in the game for a while. He's a heavy puncher. He stays true to who he is. And I'm excited to stand there and bang with him, showing what I can do with his weight. Yeah. I was going to say, on paper, it looks like this is going to be a pretty explosive fight. Is that kind of what you're expecting as well? Yeah, explosive. He's a heavy hitter. That's what he's known for. Like, nothing else, really. His card is a little iffy, but uh, he knows he's going to crack. And anytime, any place, he's going to throw some heavy stuff. And I'm excited because it gives you that danger factor. Like, okay, I need to be on my P's and Q's. I need to really be in my A game. And I'm happy. I'm healthy. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. You nailed it, and a lot of people, I guess, if there's questions about him, it's his cardio and how he performs late, right? So yeah. when you're going into a fight like that, you go, well, let's try to drag this guy late and take advantage of him, or can you not think that because 
of the way he does come out cracking. No, nah, you don't. You don't really think that if it comes, it comes. You gotta come up with it. See how he's coming into the cage. Like uh, I don't want to put myself in predicament to get cracked unnecessarily. Uh, so we got we move smart. So we know that his cardio is questionable, but we definitely gonna test it. And you haven't you have yet to see me actually tired in the cage. Like you've seen me beat up, hurt, and everything, but you never see me stop. So he's got to deal with that. He he throw punches. I can take punches. I can take hits. He's not going for a takedown. So. What, what I got to worry about. <laughs> nice. Last thing for me, talk about what's important here. I mean, it is important to, to go in and get a win and, and you know, get, put the losses behind. Or is it more about the fact that you're just happy to be in there competing again and being, being healthy? I mean, what's, what's the key? Oh, the win is definitely important. The win is the most important thing because fighters, you got to win. I want to build my brand a little bit more to the top. I want to get to the belt. So the goal is always to win. Um, but also be present and enjoy the lifestyle again. Like, don't let it become too much of a job to the point that it becomes hindrance to me and my family and stuff like that. So um, relaxing, understanding this world that we're in and uh, moving accordingly. Hey, Carl. What's up, man? Um, you won your contract at a, at a light heavyweight. Was there a reason that you went down to, to middleweight? Yeah, Dana, he asked me right there. I was fat and chubby. He said, hey, you ever been down to 185? I said, yeah. He said, okay, that's what you're fighting. And from there, hey, I'm going down to 185, the boss man. Um, if you can, can you expand a little bit more on your on your medical issues that you happened with that weight cut? I know it was it was it was it was pretty bad. Yeah. So um, the first fight with Vittori, I went to rap though, and then me being a fighter, you know, fuck it. I, see, I fought him anyway. So like three weeks later, I tried to cut the weight again, not knowing that my body was that effed up, and shut down again. But I still stepped in the cage. And then after a while, like my manager, Paradigm and all them, they, they got into my ear like, hey, you got to really start taking care of yourself. This is serious. Like you're not recovering. Something's wrong. And then a couple fights I made weight one time, which is on my IG. You see, I uh, cried and everything. That's how bad it was. And then felt good, still a little off, and then tried to cut weight again in my last fight. Started kind of going through the body shit, like these little seizures and stuff. So uh, they sent me to the hospital. And they was like, yeah, you can't keep doing this to yourself. As a wear and tear, your body's not going to come back 100% every time. So every time it's knocking bricks off the wall. And, uh, yeah, it's been crazy. So look at us now. <laughs> it's at 205, healthy, big, strong, and fast. Awesome, man. Um, and then finally, do you feel like you're fighting for your job on, on Saturday? No, I don't feel like I'm fighting for my job. I won't put that type of pressure on myself. We're in a fight game. It is what it is. We're out here to have good showings. If you stretch yourself out, like, oh, I need my job, I need this, I'm going to fuck around and make bad mistakes, put extra pressure on myself and crack. You don't do that. You uh, Realistically, you're, okay, you've lost two in a row. It is what it is. It's the fight game. My job is to go out there and perform the best way I can and put a show on for the fans, and that's what I'm going to do. Thank you. Did you always have that mindset of whether if, of not paying attention? Well, maybe not, not necessarily not paying attention to losses, but not letting that stress and pressure build fuck, on you? Fuck no. Fuck no. Right. And this, how, did, how did you come to that? The time I had to sit down with myself, like this is, comes with experience in fighting. Like as a young kid in fighting, every loss hits you hard, super hard. You, like every hard loss still hits me hard. I just take it a different way. Like I don't put the pressure on my back. I don't, I try not to change myself because of the loss. I just diagnose why I lost and how I can evolve from it. And then uh, grow as a team, conversate with the team, see what their thoughts are on it, and then uh, move forward. But Dwelling on a loss can really hinder your performance and hinder your training because now you start dwelling on, okay, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I did this wrong. Okay, where are you going? You can't always be the nail, as I said. As Krause said, my coach said, we're in the life of being the nail, so you got to be a hammer once in a while. So when you're the nail and you start talking to yourself as a nail, it's just a downward spiral. So sometimes you got to get to that mental space. So, okay, I lost. It is what it is. Wipe, this, wipe the dirt off your shoulder, bite down that mouthpiece, and keep going forward. And the kind of second one, John's sentiment, like, you, you seem so happy. Like, normally when we see you, I think we see more of that killer side of you when you come in. Yeah. And I like how you said it's just under the surface. It's still waiting. How easy is that switch for you to switch back into that mode? Uh, is it tough to keep the it, smile it's, on? It's opposite. This yeah. calm isn't my normal. Yeah. <laughs> it's my normal fighter. Like, I like to fight. So y'all see me, like, when I'm cutting weight, that's when I can't even put this persona on. <laughs> like, okay, he's just violent as shit. Yeah. That's me. So you guys see by around me, I'm playful, I'm violent, I like to play fight, I'm personable, I just, I'm just down to earth and I love it and I love being able to be present now. 
And, and last thing for me, I know you love to get out there. You love to throw hands. You like to, to kind of feel that power, and you like to kind of put your power on them. Yeah. Is there a part of you that uh, 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 maybe the twisted part of you that's like, I want to feel this power so I can laugh? A little bit, and, yeah. You see, I have, I have my little niche. A little get hit hard time. You see me smile, shake my head, and grab my shorts. I think that's my niche. I'm always down for that. It's a test what you got. Just to see if I could take it, truthfully. Like, well, I want to find out in the third round. that like, crack. Oh, shit. I can't take that. <laughs> Too late. Like, nah, you got, you got to test the waters. You got to be in there for a while. You got, you, got, you got to enjoy the warm water. So that's what I'm doing, jumping in the water and swimming. And on the flip side, when you make contact and you make a good, solid punch, are you able to see something in their reaction, their eyes immediately when you know oh, yeah. they didn't like that? Definitely. It's the reaction. It's a little bounce off. It's, a little, it's so many different reactions from different fighters. It's just the experience that come with it. They have the twitches. A lot of them smile. And it tells me what type of fighter you are. If I crack you and you smile and you bite down a mouthpiece and I see you settle in, I'm like, oh, well, fuck, this is a fight. If I crack you, I see you back off, shake it off, try to get yourself together, try to re-diagnose what the fuck just happened. Okay, now I got to eat up space. Now I got to keep you in that spite, keep you in that mindset. So that's, that's, that's the telltale sign. Like You can definitely tell if you crack somebody, how their how the mindset is. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you, brother. All good? All good? All right, y'all.